you're going to fail no matter what. Everyone's going to fail. It's just your interpretation of failure, I guess. If you see failure as a bad thing, then you're going to struggle. My name's Benny Howell. I uh, currently play for Gloucestershire Cricket and um, my age is 28. I was lucky enough to grow up in a uh, school. We lived on school grounds. I was always sort of popping down to, to the school first 11 and watching the cricket and, and wanting to join in. Last year, luckily enough, I had a really good year. I was leading wicket taker in the 2020, which actually earned me a call up to a franchise team in Bangladesh. My first team debut for Hampshire was a big moment. The year I played for Hampshire, I got the most amount of runs in the one day competition, and yet they still were sort of playing me in and out. Maybe because I was young, maybe because there's the big names in the team and I got a little frustrated. I sort of had a mutual agreement and I said, look, I want to look elsewhere. John Bracewell, who was the coach then of Gloucestershire, I spoke to him and I got signed by Gloucestershire. I'd train until about mid-afternoon, three, four, um, try and split it up because you sort of do your gym, depending on your programme, and then you go into your nets, your bowling, your batting, and then your recovery in terms of you know, you sort of sit down and stretch for 30, 40 minutes. So if you include all that, maybe from about nine to three. If it's in season and we've got games like, let's say two, three times in that week, we would sort of train for a couple hours. I wouldn't do any more than that before the day before the game and then just rest and then you play the game. And you may have one day rest, one or two days rest in between that. So it sort of changes depending on the, on the schedule. If it was a day where it was a full training day, you, you, you go in, you probably get your gym done straight away or you, you're running and then we have an s &C guy who's brilliant. He actually works in tennis, he's really good. He brings new things to the table. So we'll do indiv individualized programs depending on what you need. So for me, aerobically, I probably don't do too much, try and maintain, because I get a lot of niggles, especially because of my back. I'm doing a lot of sort of prehab work, if you like, and, and strength specific type movement for me. So you do that in the morning. And then it'd be probably team nets and fielding as a group. And then in between and after that, you would, you would go and work with the coaches if, if, if you felt like you needed to, but they're, they're pretty flexible. For me, I, I feel like if I'm feeling fit, I'll go and try and do extra work. I'll go in the bowling machine and just hit balls or something like that. I was never ate a bad diet, always in my vegetables and blah, blah, blah. In an ideal world, I try and have three good meals a day, and then around it, pretty simple, a bunny protein shake if I need to have it, but try and just get it from normal sources of food as much as I can. I think there's a massive misconception about diet. I went to see a guy and, and, and basically I've changed my diet completely. Um, so I've literally do not touch any sort of manufactured carbs like pasta, any of that to an extent. And I get my sauce from fat. In the morning, I just like get like, butter, grass-fed butter, but chuck it on the, a lot of it on the pan, mix it in with some eggs, avocado, salmon, maybe some little bit of bacon, but just have that, whereas before I'd have, you know, you'd have your toast, your bread. But what I'm learning is that actually that's been a real killer for me in terms of mood, energy. I think that was a big part of it as well. Um, so it's helped me massively. I've, I've actually lost quite a lot of weight. I don't mind as long as I'm not losing strength in the gym. I, I feel just a bit more vibrant, a bit more fresh and, and move better. Lots of vegetables, good proteins and a lot of good fat. Cutting out as much sugar as you can. It's pretty simple, but it's harder than you, it's sometimes harder than you think. I was diagnosed with depression four years ago now. And then I figured out over the last year that it probably wasn't depression. And then I went and got through the club and I see the psychologist, psychiatrist, and so ADHD, and, and that's what caused a bit of depression, a bit of both. I used to get confused and I, I sometimes get too flustered with things and it affected my training and matches and my mood swings. So I think that's when I realized actually um, a big part of my training is getting the mind right. Cricket is a very mindful sort of sport if you're not in the right mindset, then it doesn't matter how much you train. There's certain games where it's a big game and sometimes it just anxiety takes over sometimes and it has it's affected me badly and I haven't performed. I think some guys are naturally, sometimes those guys, the guys who perform well, they're not thinkers and that's actually why they do so well because they're generally living in the present and they've always got that natural ability to do so. So I wouldn't say, um, I wouldn't put me down as one of the top mental guys at all, at all. But I, I, I feel for me, it, it, I struggle with it. That's why I'm doing it. 
I've always read about visualization and in, in, in sport, and I always thought every big sportsman in, in any sport they all talk about mindfulness and 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 a lot of it their training's imagery and imagining being successful. I found it incredibly hard to visualize, like to sit there and think about certain things. And, and I heard about the Space app uh, through one of the guys who was using it, and he says it's brilliant. So I started that, and it was just sort of basics of breathing and filling your body, etc., etc. And then you sort of get a foundation in that. So you can go into any sort of aspects on, on the app now. You can do like, if it's anxiety, if it's rehab, you've come back from injury, if it's you want to learn to visualize or if you want a motivation or focus or whatever it may be. And a lot of it comes down to the same thing at the end of the day, just being present. I try and make sure no matter what, as a, the one consistent I can control the day is, is doing that every morning. A couple of years ago, I started getting injured in four-day cricket a lot, and the way my mind works, I lost the love for it. Sometimes you can get a little bit depressed and start thinking because you're not performing and you're not enjoying it. Then like, why are you doing this? Every time I thought I played in the 2020 and the 50 over with the white boy, I was thinking, do I enjoy this? And I was like, well, yeah, I do. It just suits the way I am, suits the way I play. This is what I'm learning more and more now as I'm getting older. It's more sort of the intuitive thinking. You can't control the outcome. You can only control what you're doing there, and for me that's the hardest part. You know, if I have a mindset of, I'm performing, I'm showing everyone what I can do, I think generally I'm very clear, I know what I want to bowl that ball, and I'm just like running in, just confident, there's no real, like, think about one thing or this, or head there, or what, just run in, I'm just going to nail this, where I'm going to bowl it. I think if you watch a live game, you would see, actually, these guys run because we're in the field, it's I'm blowing. At the end of a 20 over, I'm knackered. Because every ball is important, so you, every time you hit the ball, you've got to be sprinting, because you've got to be looking back if you want to get another one. Every inch matters. It's a massively an individual sport within a team sport, so it's bowler versus batter. Because in cricket, you fail more times than you succeed, and that's just a fact. You're going to bowl a bad ball, you're going to get hit for occasionally when you bowl, even if you have a good game and all. So you're going to fail during the game, even if you have a successful game. About two years ago, I got my first taste of uh, a Lord's, Lord's final when we played Surrey. And we should no way have won that game. The way the game turned around we won, it was just like, it was just un unbelievable. I didn't take the last catch, I took the catch before in front of our Gloss fans and I remember that feeling. I think it was a photo of me just like, the feeling of winning sort of, the, you felt the fans, you felt your family, it wasn't just you, it wasn't just your team, it was everyone involved in it. And that sort of feeling in sport, I don't think you can really replicate anywhere else. Certainly at times where I wanted to quit. Certainly, and I've always thought, oh, it's actually quitting might be the best option. Because it's quite, a, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a lot of failure in cricket. So it can, it can really hurt your soul. <laughs> but um, yeah, but it wasn't the right thing. And quitting is certainly not. My, my two, three year aim is to get into that England setup. That's sort of my aim. I hope I just got to perform, I guess.